G'day coppers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Hub's Fall Driving, we'll be checking out exactly what you should be putting into the bottom of your cooler to keep your favorite beverage icy cold on a hot day. Whether that be the usual party ice, ice packs, or maybe even the new kid on the block, Techni Ice. So, let's get into it. So I grabbed all three options and I put them into the bottom of the deep freeze for 48 hours. They're as cold as they're gonna get in there anyway. Now, the ice pack, first one, as you can see in the flare image here, reached a minimum temperature of negative 12.1 degrees Celsius. And the ice, as you can see in this image here, reached a minimum temperature of negative 1.2. But the Techni ice reached a minimum temperature in exactly the same conditions as the others, of negative 21.4 degrees Celsius. Now that's not all, the guys at Techni Ice tell me that this stuff can go down to negative 190 degrees Celsius. Now that's great if you've got access to liquid nitrogen, but I don't, and you probably don't either. So you can rely on this stuff getting down to negative 20 in your home freezer at home. But that's not all, just because it's the coldest doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best to keep your stuff cold in your esky. Why is that? Let me explain. So first up, let's have a look at our initial temperatures. Graphed up. Ice blocks, negative 1.2 degrees Celsius. The ice pack, significantly cooler, negative 12.2 degrees Celsius. And the Techni ice, the coolest of them all, negative 21.4 degrees Celsius. Back to our regular programming. So the first concept you should get your head around in order to understand which one of these might be better than the other is called heat capacity. Now, all it simply means is that different substances, fluids in our case, require different amounts of energy to get down to the same temperature. For instance, let's take ethanol or common alcohol and water. So water takes significantly more energy than ethanol does to drop it, let's say from 10 degrees Celsius down to five degrees Celsius. Now, as we all know, energy can't be created or destroyed as you learnt back in high school. So if you've got your five degree ethanol and your five degree water, and you're trying to cool something down from 20 degrees Celsius, your water is gonna release more energy into the system and is gonna cool significantly better, even though they both started at the same temperature, both the ethanol and the water. So in that case, water's a better cooler. But that's not all. Now the final concept that you need to get your head around in order to make smart decisions of what you should be putting into your cooler is what's called latent heat of fusion. And all it simply means is the amount of energy that it takes to transition from a solid like ice, in the case of water, back to a liquid like fluid water. Now, why it's transitioning? it doesn't actually change in temperature. Even though it's still sucking out heat from, let's say your drinks and keeping them cold, it doesn't actually change temperature. And that's important, and here's why. Let's say we've got two thermodynamically identical ice packs. The only difference being that one melts at zero degrees Celsius and the other one melts at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we're starting off with the same eskies, the same amount of drinks in each esky, starting at the same temperature. Everything is identical, except for the melting point of the ice packs. Now, when the zero degree ice pack reaches zero degrees, it's going to start that phase change from solid back to liquid. And it doesn't change temperature at that point, okay? Even though it keeps cooling the drinks, it doesn't change temperature. However, our 20 degree ice pack esky, it's going to keep cooling the drinks, but it's slowly going to get warmer because it hasn't reached that phase change point. So what that means is whatever temperature you're trying to attain, you want something that melts below that temperature. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the healing bench and have a better look at the Techni Ice. So this is the Techni Ice sheet that comes from the factory. Now, as you can see, it's pretty much dead flat and we need to hydrate it. We'll show you that procedure in a second. So the sheet itself, it's about 3,900 wide and about 2,850 high. So there's actually a bit of a diagram here, so we'll zoom in a bit and we'll have a look at that. So this is the composition on the outside of the packaging. A layer of plastic there, then a layer of textile, then the polymer in the form of beads, 
then another layer of textile and then we got the plastic on the outside on the other side and of course you'd want it to be food safe so before we hydrate it let's pull one apart and see what's on the inside now here's an individual cell that I've cut off a sheet so we'll just take the edge off and we'll see what's inside it Oh, these scissors are blunt as. I'm going to buy some new scissors tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we've got the outer layer there. And then we've got an inner layer here of fabric. And then we've got the polymer in the center here. I'll tip out on the table so you can have a bit of that. Looks like caster sugar. And then we've got another layer of fabric. Now, the back layer of plastic has actually got a lot of fine holes in there in a grid pattern, so that's where our water can get in so we can hydrate it. All right, let's show you the uh, hydration procedure. So I actually collected a little bit of the polymer and eyeglass here. I thought it might be fun is to grab a bit of water and just squirt it in, see what happens. And give it a bit of a mix. Certainly seems to be sucking down the water. As you can see, it's absorbed all of that. And <laughs> just keeps on going. Wow. That's expanded quite significantly. We seem to have a little bit of water in the bottom now. So as you can see, that tiny little bit of polymer in the bottom has expanded to fill up a probably 30 mil eye cup there. And that's what's going to happen inside the cell. So we'll show it to you now. So here's our Techni eye sheet here, as you can see, nice and thin. And I've got some lukewarm water in here, probably about 30 or 40 degrees. All you simply do is place it in the water, then you give it a good squeeze to try and get those air bubbles out and force the water in. Now I've done this a couple of times, even when it blows up and hydrates, which is starting to now, and expand, it's not a bad idea just to leave it in there for a while afterwards and it seems to grow even a little bit larger. So now we've given that a decent squeeze, we'll just leave it in the drink for a few minutes for it to fully expand and we'll show you exactly how much it expands in a couple of minutes so it's been in the drink for a few minutes now remember we started off with a piece of plastic sheet not much thicker than a piece of paper and after a couple of minutes it's expanded significantly as you can see here that led me to my next problem now I wanted to do a fair comparison I wanted to compare the Techni ice an ice block like this one and regular ice and see which one worked the best. Now the fairest way I could think of doing it was to use the same volume of Techni ice, ice brick or regular ice in the esky with a few drinks and see which one worked the best. But how do you measure the volume of this? And then it came to me, I had a eureka moment. Archimedes would have been proud. We'll show you how we conquered that one next. The story of Archimedes and the Eureka run goes something like this. So Archimedes was tasked with by the king of the time to work out whether his crown, made of allegedly pure gold by the crown jeweler, was in fact pure gold or had been alloyed with a cheaper material, a cheaper metal. As he was jumping into the bath, Archimedes realised that the amount of himself that went into the bath was exactly the same in volume that the water had risen up. So then he worked out, well, if I measure the same amount of what I know to be pure gold in weight and put that into a volume of water, it should displace exactly the same amount of water as the crown jewel's crown does. And if it doesn't, well, obviously, 
the metal had been alloyed. Now, we're not going to do that, and we don't have any gold, but we're using the same principle. And it turns out the jeweler had tried to rip the king off. So that had displaced exactly that much water. So all we have to do now is top it up. And the story goes when Archimedes worked this out, he ran down the street naked, yelling Eureka, which means basically I've got it. There we go, as these syringes are about five millilitres and we put eight in there, that tells me that this displaces 40 mil or the equivalent of 40 cc cubic centimetres. So we'll now be able to put an equal amount of the ice packs, the regular ice packs, or normal ice, and that'll give us our fairer shot at working out which one's actually the best. Now, I've already measured the ice block and conveniently, <laughs> I can do ice cubes at whatever volume I like. And interestingly, ice actually expands slightly when it's frozen, it expands about nine or 10%. So if I put 9.1 mil of water into an ice cube container, when it gets to frozen, it'll be 10 mil. So I'll have a 10 cc or 10 mil block. I'll be able to work off those numbers pretty easily. Anyway, let's have a look at the results of the volumes. So now we know exactly how much one cell of Techni Ice takes up in volume. We can easily work out how many of those equals one of these. And let's have a look at the graph for that. So this is the volume in cubic centimeters squared. Now, as you can see, the ice blocks were tailor made to be 10 cubic centimetres squared or 10 cc each. The ice pack, well, I really couldn't change the size of that. And that came in at 1,140 cubic centimetres. And the Techni ice came in at 40 cubic centimetres or 40 millilitres. Now, to get the same amount, we needed 114 ice blocks to equal the one ice pack and 28 Techni ice blocks equaled 98.2%. So splitting hairs in the volume there. Rightio, on to the next bit. So now we know exactly how much of each three we'll need. It's time to load up the eskies and fire up the data logger. I'll see you back at the healing bench. So we've got three identical foam eskies. And first one is our esky block, so we'll pop that in. Now that's 1,140 cubic centimetres and we got a couple of cans of drink there and you'll be able to see a thermocouple probe so we'll be able to keep track of exactly how cold or hot the cans are. Let's have a look at number two and now for our second contender block ice. That's 114 10cc ice pieces. Now I measured them all out <laughs> using a syringe so We'll pop that in, so it's the equivalent of our ice pack in volume. And again, we've got a couple of cokes with our thermocouple probe in there. And finally now for number three. And now for the Techni Ice. We need 28 cubes to be the equivalent of the one ice block. And again, the standard two drinks for the thermocouple. Seems to be taking up a little bit more volume in this one. There we go. All that's left to do now is to put on the data logger. And here we go with the old trusty data logger. So on channel one, I'll put in the block eyes. And then channel two, the standard old reliable, the ice blocks. 
and on channel three the Techni Ice. So we've got all four channels running because I'm also logging the ambient temperature every minute or so. So let's start the stopwatch and we'll record for 48 hours. I'll see you guys in 48 hours. A few moments later. Okay, so we've just slid through the 48 hour mark. So we can stop the data logger and have a look at our temperatures. Ambient being 22. Our first one, which is a block ice, is sit at, sitting at 19 degrees. So it probably didn't make the full 48 hours. Number two being our ice blocks is around the same sort of temperature at 18.1. And number three, which is the Techni ice, is sitting at 19.4. But which one stayed the coolest for the longest? Let's check that out on the graph now. What I might do though, is after I pull the drinks out, is I'll take a photograph with the Fleur and we'll see what temperatures they're currently sitting at. Well, let's drag out the Fleur camera and have a look at our final temperatures. Our ice pack, 16.8 degrees. As you can see up there, our ice, was 17.4 degrees Celsius. And our Techni ice, 18.4 degrees Celsius. So we've fully exhausted the cooling capacity of each of our options. So now here's the proof of the pudding. Let's have a look at the data log and here's the graph. And here we go, the final verdict, ice pack versus ice blocks versus Techni ice. The ice pack, the blue line here, did the worst of the three. No other way of describing it, but the ice blocks didn't do significantly better. We were a little bit cooler earlier on, but by the time we got to the probably 15 hour mark here, it was pretty much line ball. But we did drop off in between the 24 hour mark and the 30 hour mark. Now I assume that's where the cans and the thermocouple dropped in to the ice water slurry. But soon we're back on track again, heading back towards ambient. Techni ice did the best of the three by far. It maintained the lowest temperature for the longest period of time, even at the 24 hour mark where two or three degrees centigrade colder using the Techni ice. It's, it's a no brainer, ladies and gents. The Techni ice outperformed the ice pack and the ice box by a significant margin, considering it was exactly the same volume of product in each esky, the eskies started at exactly the same temperature. And the load, the thermal load, the two cans of Coke, refrigerated two cans of Coke in each esky were at exactly the same temperature when I started off. That's it. Techni Ice wins the battle. <laughs> anyway, on with our conclusion. Well, here we go. The proof is in the pudding. Ice bricks. Melted ice in eskies. Those days are done. Techni ice, it's cooler. It stays cooler longer. And if you have access to things like liquid nitrogen, you can bring it down to negative 190 degrees. But even in your regular deep freeze, this is your best option. Anyway, guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it a old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one. So let's have a look at our final temperatures with the FLIR camera. So our ice pack, 16.8 degrees. I don't remember the next one or the one after. 